So for my experiments, we we take this this surface right here. This uh, is called a crystal, a platinum crystal, and we deposit a second metal onto the surface. And basically, the way we do this is we we heat up the second metal. Um, uh, so it's going to be heated up so that uh, the metal will vaporize, uh, and it emits atoms of the second metal onto the platinum. So we can actually create these surfaces that we model in the, the computational program, where we can we can put the second metal, create one one layer of, of the second metal on top of the surface, or we can create this the sandwich, sandwich configuration, as we call it, or if we keep depositing enough atoms, um, the, the properties of the base metal are shielded out, and we can, we can create um, a surface of the, the metals that we're depositing. So uh, I do, after we uh, create the different surfaces, we introduce the ammonia uh, molecule which is NH3 onto the surface, and then uh, we heat up the surface, and so this is the temperature as a function of time. It's a linear temperature band, and we watch what comes off. So if ammonia does not decompose on the surface, um, the ammonia, when we heat it up, will come off molecularly. And in the mass spectrometer, we can look at the masses of the atoms coming off. So nitrogen has, or nitrogen has a mass of 14. Each of the three um, hydrogens each have a mass of one. So the mass of this molecule coming off will be 17. And we can watch for that. But if the decomposition happens on the surface, um, then the nitrogen and the hydrogen bonds will break. They're going to have atomic nitrogen and hydrogen on the surface, uh, which is the reaction that we want to see happen. And when we heat up the surface, what comes off is nitrogen and hydrogen. So we'll see mass 28 and mass 2 coming off of the surface when we heat the surface. <coughs> um, so when we do these experiments, uh, this is looking at um, this is really 28, um, or this is nitrogen coming off the surface. Uh, I guess just so it's not that confusing. Um, so we look at 28, but what happens sometimes when the, the nitrogen molecule goes into the surface or into the mass spectrometer, it can break these bonds. So you can see also 14 and 28 will have the same, you'll see the same, uh, the same peaks. So we're looking at 14 or nitrogen in this, um, in this picture. And you can see only one of the surfaces has nitrogen coming off, which is uh, the surface configuration, so nickel on top of the platinum, um, which is the surface that we predicted to be active in our computational, um, in our computational calculations. And, uh, and so this, um, this proves that, well, this verifies our ability to start predicting complex bimetallic catalysts using computational methods. So, um, in conclusion, uh, we talked about how hydrogen, a hydrogen economy can be an alternative to our current fossil fuel-based system. Uh, the hydrogen can be created from renewable energy uh, and it has higher efficiencies, meaning more energy is going towards the process that you, that you want it to go towards, uh, than uh, looking at combustion engines for vehicles. Uh, but we also talked about how there's a storage issue with ammonia and possibly using, or sorry, a storage, storage issue with hydrogen. And we <coughs> talked about how ammonia can possibly solve this um, by being stored as a liquid in the vehicle and then decomposing it to create the hydrogen to run the fuel, the hydrogen to run the fuel cell. We also talked about how computational modeling can be used as a, 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 a can be used to predict active catalysts for the decomposition reaction. But this is not unique to the decomposition reaction of ammonia. 
um, computational catalysts or computational methods can be used to predict active catalysts for any reactions. Now, this is a relatively new method within chemical engineering and within science, and people are just starting to use um, methods like these to um, calculate uh, or predict bimetallic catalysts or trimetallic catalysts for any reaction. Um, and we were able to see ex uh, from the experimental results that, that uh, our predictions were validated. So this is a viable method for pre predicting catalysts. And that's the end of my presentation. Any questions? <laughs>